So let's give it up for our brother, Frank Hyde. Hey man, walk this side. I just want to say I'm excited to be uh, here just to share a, a couple of things here. Uh, Colton asked me to do a, a, just a, a little short charge on going from fruitless to fruitful All right. in 30 days. Oh, All right. <laughs> going from fruitless yeah. to fruitful in what? 30 days. 30 days. Some of y'all already know. Oh. <laughs> All right, now here's the thing. Turn to Philippians 1. Okay. How many people believe that they can be fruitful in the next 30 days? Raise yes. your hand. All right. Amen. Almost got everybody convinced. Amen. All right. Hope not the lesson. Everybody raise their hand. Amen. All right, Philippians 1. I think, I think, I don't want to, you know, I really want to just teach from a heart, teach from a point of conviction, and just a desire to really fulfill God's purpose in our lives. I think everybody here wants to do great things for God. Amen? Yeah. All right. So let's just approach from that aspect. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a little preaching and teaching, but a lot of practicals as well, because I believe the greatest thing about being fruitful, which we're going to talk a little bit about, is desire. I can give you every practical and every illustration and everything else. So write that down. The first thing is you got to have an incredible desire to be fruitful. Nice. All right. Now, let's look at what Paul says in Philippians 1 here. Philippians 1 verse 22. He says, if I am to go on living in the body. Philippians 1 verse 22. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean what? Um, fruitful labor. Fruitful for me. labor for me. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you going to say about your life? Mm. Yet, what do I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is better by far, mm -hmm. but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced to this, I know that I will remain and will, will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. Mm -hmm. See, Paul had the mindset to be fruitful. Right. Mm -hmm. Write this down. I want to be fruitful more than I want to blank. You got to fill that in. I want to be fruitful more than I want to blank. See, what convinced me about this passage is Paul was all about one thing, fruitful labor. See, what is fruitfulness competing for in your life? See, just as you have a plan and you schedule everything in your life, there should be a daily focus and a considerable amount of time devoted to being fruitful. When is the last time you prayed, I'm talking really prayed, about being fruitful? I'm not talking about a little token prayer. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? right yeah. When you just really got down on your knees or wherever you, your time when you meet God, you know, it's kind of like what was saying, you know, give me fruit or I die. Mm -hmm. Mentality. See, the only competition to Paul's fruitfulness was heaven. Oh. Mm -hmm. Come on, Frank. The only thing that competed with, with fruitfulness. What's heaven? That's why he said, I desire to go to where? Heaven. To heaven. Mm -hmm. But because God says, I've got to be here, then that's going to mean one thing. Fruitful labor. Fruitful labor. Fruitful labor. Fruitful labor. So the only thing that competed with fruitfulness was heaven. Well, come on. And since you haven't died yet, right. thanks right. to our brother here, what <laughs> I'm saying this morning in the sermon here, that means that you got to be what? Fruitful. 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 Come on, bro. Amen? Amen. So we, can we, have we figured it out yet? <laughs> if you're not dead, you got to be fruitful. Amen? Amen. Because when you're dead, you're going to have it. 
Clear fruit or die. Amen. Clear fruit or die. But the Lord not gonna kill you if you're not fruitful. But amen. Let's not let's not go that far. You said that. You know we're not saying that. But we're not saying is this: the only thing that should compete with fruitfulness in your life is heaven. Come on, come on, friend. Now, obviously, why do you go to work? So you can pay the bills. So you can get a study over your house. So you can be what? Fruitful. Amen. Why do you read the Bible? So you can know about God. Then you can study the Bible with somebody, and you can be what? Fruitful. Amen. I think y'all get it. Alright, why do you have discipleship time? So you can learn about your weaknesses. Amen. So you get your life right so God can move through you. And you can start the power with somebody and you can be what? You got it. You understand it. See, everything is motivated toward being what? Fruitful. See, you gotta change your mindset. Come on, bro. Why do I come to church? So I can be what? Fruitful. And also I can encourage my other brothers and sisters to be what? Fruitful. See, everything's got to be motivated to being fruitful. I'm going to ask you one question. How many of us would show up to work tomorrow knowing that we wouldn't get paid for it? Maybe cold. Because this is in heaven. You wouldn't show up for work. If you know you weren't getting paid, right. then why do we do all that we do and not claim the prize? Wow. Our prize is fruitfulness. Mm. I can't change my status with God no matter how much truthful I am, amen? Because yeah. I'm saved by grace. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. That's why it's not about, you know, I can be fruitful to go to heaven. No. You can be faithful to go to heaven. Amen. Yeah. But see, your, our responsibility is to be fruitful. I'm going to ask you guys a question. How many sad faces you ever seen at a baptism? A baptism? Come on. Huh? Come on, help me out. No. 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 Got a lot more. Help me out. Roger, he's been a Christian alone he's in the group. Right? No. Any sad faces at the baptistry vote? None. <laughs> hey, hey, man. Zero. Zero. All right, let me hear from Camel. Uh, hey, man, Camel, Camel would be honest. Right. Roger might want to do the preacher stretch. Uh, Camel, Camel would be honest. Camel, help us out here. Any sad faces, sister, at the baptistry? No. 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 <laughs> we can trust Camel. <laughs> and we can trust Roger, too. Hey, man. But you understand the point, right? Yeah. There are no sad faces. At the baptistry. Oh, right. Okay. Now, a lot of hard work went in. Yeah. yeah. A lot of sleepless time. A lot of concern and all the good things that goes into it. We'll talk more about that. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Do you want to be fruitful? Mm -hmm. yep. Do you have the mindset to be fruitful? See, when you're focused on something, it doesn't really matter about all the other little issues. See, some of us, we get so tripped up in life and the worries and, and the concerns. And I'm not saying don't get those issues discipled and, 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 and help with. But our number one concern should be, how am I going to be fruitful? Right. How am I going to help the brothers and sisters around mm -hmm. me to be fruitful? Because mm -hmm. I know that hey, the Christian life is hard. The Bible says anyone who, who wants to live a godly life will be persecuted, will go through struggles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the joy, mm -hmm. the joy of the Christian walk, guys, is in fruit. Mm -hmm. It's in being fruitful. You know, when you go up through tough times, you know, I was playing with little Haley before, before this, we were hanging out there playing with little Haley. You know, we're having a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, think about those who have children, you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. When the chips get down and they all else fell, you got to man, I got some awesome kids. Mm -hmm. You know, God blesses here. You know what I mean? It's just a reminder. You know, and so I think for us, I think some of us maybe haven't baptized yet. I mean, I was there. But I just have to just say, I want to be fruitful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I just say, okay, remember Jim Rose and I. We started in the fall. And we said, okay, bro, we're going to be fruitful. And, you know, he's going through it, getting married, man, and lost. 
You know, and I was like, okay, but when we get, get focused here, we're gonna be fruitful. I said, we're just gonna keep praying. So we said, we're gonna, we're gonna pray every morning. And then God gave us Preston. So it was me, it was Preston, Gabriel and I, we were on the phone praying every morning at 6.50. And we were just praying and said, God bless us so we can be fruitful. You know, and every morning we just kept praying. We just kept believing that God was going to give us some fruit. Mm -hmm. And we asked God that at first they didn't make it. Mm -hmm. You know, but I was like, okay, we just got to keep it. God, I remember Jerry Brown was like, man, what's going on? I said, we all right. <laughs> keep praying. God's just testing us to see if we really want this or not. Wow, wow. He says, there's something in our hearts and lives that we're not ready for the fruit yet. Okay. I said, when we're ready, he's going to send it. Right. So I said, whatever it is, I don't know what it is. Are you in sin, bro? No, I'm not in sin that I know of. Amen. All right. Let's keep working. Let's just keep going after. Let's just keep praying. Let's keep encouraging each other. Let's keep loving each other. And then you get that breakthrough. Oh, yeah. And that's what you got to pray for. Mm. It's God, just give me that breakthrough baptism. Mm -hmm. right. Just give me that one guy, that one girl that's going to come on in and just going to totally change my life. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you think Ananias felt? Mm. <laughs> how do you think Ananias felt? When you get to heaven, you're going to fellowship with Ananias. Anna, how was it like baptizing the apostle Paul? <laughs> Man, I was scared. I don't know what was. <laughs> but the Lord said, go, and I went. And the world was changed. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like one baptism. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now the Bible never recorded Ananias did any other baptizing, did it? <laughs> we don't know. He didn't record it. I'm sure he did. Amen. We trust the world. Amen. <laughs> but you just need one. You follow what I'm saying here? Yeah? Yeah, you need cool. one baptism to change your whole perspective, change your whole life, on, change man. your whole attitude. Amen. Yeah, yeah, I remember Preston was like, bro, I got this guy. <laughs> Name's Mike. Yeah. Mm. And so I remember the first time I met Mike. You know, he was a great guy. And Mike was sharing about me the Bible talk down there. And, and the more I, the more he shared, the more I realized, like, hey, that sounds like something I used to be like. Mm -hmm. wow. I just got a vision for him. Mm -hmm. See, I believe a lot of times, guys, people become Christians because we got a vision for their yes. life. Right. Mm -hmm. And you just really have to decide that they're going to become a disciple. Right. That's what you got to do. You got to decide. Not them. You. All right. You got to decide that whoever you're studying with, you're going to become a disciple. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of it's about your own personal convictions. If you decide a person's going to make it, unless they're just totally unopened, I mean, you follow what I'm saying? They're going to be like the wall. Or they definitely need a sledgehammer to change them. Right. I think they can make it. Right. Because I know if a guy shows up in my house enough, and I got the word of God, and I know the spirit is moving in my life, he's going to become a disciple. Yeah. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. I just got to find the time in my schedule, in my life, to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when I remember Mike, just studying with Mike, he was so inspiring. You know, Preston and I, we were in there, and Jerbrell, so one time, you know, we were just sharing our hearts and our lives and just got a vision, and Peter came up. And yeah. then, you know, you always hit that wall. Mm -hmm. They got this heavy persecution yeah. from the former fellowship. They read about all the stuff, you know, in the old church. Right. And I remember Roger, thanks for Roger. Roger came on over, and we worked as a team. We just sat him down, and we just went through everything, A to Z. Mm -hmm. Said, God, we have nothing to hide. And they just, they just like, okay, guys, I see that you guys are preaching the truth. I said, what are you seeing in us? I mean, what can you say bad about Roger? Right. No, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah? Oh. I mean, you're going to get like Roger. You know what I mean? Come on. I mean, what can you say? He loves God too much? To him, there's nothing false. Yeah. I mean, that's nothing. What can you say bad about Roger? He's a godly man. He's raised his kids to be godly. Wow. His children are godly. They're leading in the church. What can you say? Yeah. And then we start saying about, you know, how in our church, 95 plus percent of our people make it to the altar pier. Yeah. What's it like in the world? Mm -hmm. So you start giving people perspective. Come on. And start sharing with them. 
Why do we do certain things? And it makes a lot of sense when you put it in spiritual terms. Amen. And see, that's what the world needs. See, the world is just opposite of what God's word is. Yep. But see, we've got to make a decision that we have the truth. Yeah. Yep. And we have a solution to life's greatest problem, which is sin. Right. See, when you are convinced that you have a solution to the problem, think about it. If you were a doctor and you had this incredible vaccine, you wouldn't just hold it to your laboratory, would you? Because the purpose of a vaccine is to help mankind. See, that's the purpose of us being a disciple. We've been saved from sin, and because we've been saved from sin, we want to help others to be saved from sin. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. And see, you've got to realize how much God has saved me from. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you do that, you don't have to share. You know, you, you know, you just share your heart how God has changed your life. And you share about the great church. And guess, we have an incredible evangelist. Yep. Yeah. You know, you just got to do like I think I shared this before. I just got to get in the church. Yeah. I've had to get in the church and come start preaching the word. The spirit gets awakened in them. Yeah. If they got any way happy or hurt for God, they're going to come back. Right. They're going to be open for a study. Yep. But see, guys, we're blessed. We have a great church. I mean, look around this room. Guys. We got a great, loving, intense group. And see, I do appreciate what Carol shared. Guys, we got a whole bunch of things like that. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. See, people say those kind of things. You got to believe it. Mm -hmm. You got to believe that the brothers and sisters in this room, I'm not talking about anybody else. Right. We're incredibly awesome. Not because of who we are, but because as a collective force, mm -hmm. we're becoming a force for God. Amen. Mm -hmm. But here's a couple of challenges I want to throw on out there. Come on. Do we have the calendar to be fruitful? Mm -hmm. Look in 1 Timothy 5. I never used this verse before, so <laughs> if I need to get challenged of using it, amen, I will. But amen. 1 Timothy 5, verse 13. Come on, Frank. <laughs> I just think there's a couple of things we got to change here. If we can change a few things, you know how it is? Yeah. It's going to tweak a few things. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? It's not yeah. a lot. Because see, John 13 says, you'll know the disciples by their what? Love. So we got the love down, right? Yeah. We got the great preacher down, amen? Yeah. Amen. 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 amen? We got the soldiers down, amen? amen. So now we got to tweak up a few things. Just a few. Just a few. Amen? Amen. amen? amen. You don't mind being tweaked a little bit, right? No, 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 no. Don't want to waste your time. You don't want to for nothing, amen? Come on, bro. After a little tweak in here, amen? Come on, tweak the word. Let's tweak it up here. All right, 1 Timothy 5, verse 13. It says, besides this, they get into the habit of being idle mm -hmm. and going from house to house. And not only do they become idlers, but they're also gossips and busybodies, saying things they ought not to. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you, verse. Yeah. Well, so why do you use that verse? Well, think about your calendar. Are you a busy body? Mm. Or are you busy for the Lord? Mm. See, I don't want us to fall into the trap of being a busy body. Because I can't say anybody in this room isn't focused on serving the kingdom of God. Mm. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. We don't have anybody missing church. Or if they do, there's a reason why they miss. Right. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody's like not showing up. So I mean, everybody loves the church and generally want to do the right thing. Okay, okay. our challenge though is this. I think that some of us are spiritually idle. Because see, we've got to make sure that we're spending time doing kingdom building activities and not just spending time doing kingdom events. See, the kingdom of God, there's going to be plenty of events you can do. There are plenty of great things. But this is where I think we we got to, as leaders, we got to make sure that we're getting people focused on running it through what I call the fruit meter. Whoa. The fruit meter. The fruit meter. <laughs> think about this. Is this action or act going to lead to more fruit? If it does, we do it. If it's just keeping us busy and saying we're doing something in the kingdom of God, then we gotta go, uh, I gotta rethink that. Come on, friend. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. You know, we've had discipleship time the next 30 days. Instead of just sitting at the house and talking about our sins and our life, hey, hey, we all got sin, amen? Yeah. Yeah. You walk outside, brothers, come on, you know what I'm talking about, right? You're yeah. trying to walk yeah. and you see somebody in the wrong place at the wrong time and you're sitting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to happen. But well, let's not spend our next 30 days talking about the same sins we talked about last 30 days. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, yeah. If you, you know, if you mess up, you blow it, you see the wrong thing, just call it, but, bro, I messed up. But don't beat yourself up. Right. Yeah. I think a lot of us get into navel gazing. Yeah. Mm. You know, is God going to send down the lightning bolts? No, the Lord wants to send some bolts and some non Christians. They want to use you to help them. <laughs> You see, a lot of us we get so all like it's the Bible man, we sin one time and we get all like all oh, the world's falling I sin. Yeah. You gotta sin. That's right. It's a part of the Christian battle. Yeah. Before you just gave in. Right. Mm. See, reason why I say, see, I like to study the Bible people because see I, I like some of you guys like golf, right? I think studying the Bible with someone is tea time. Yeah. Seriously, it's tea time. Come on, Phil. I got to get the Bible, <laughs> tea them on up, <laughs> get the Bible, and just whack at them. Just <laughs> <laughs> whack at them. Seriously, that's how I look at it. It's my tea time. I mean, Satan beat me up all week, accusing me and everything else. I get to write the non Christians. Line them on up, teeing up the Word of God. Just going for it. Oh, damn. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> See, I think a lot of us, we've forgotten what it's like. Because those who ever play golf, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. You can have 30 rousy shots, but you get one good shot. Yeah, and and yeah, what are you talking yeah, about? That way. And one good shot, right? Oh, yeah. You might have had 30 shanked off yeah. in one of the woods. <laughs> Maybe one of them went like two feet like oh, yeah. my, my drivers do. Yeah. You, know? you don't think about that. You think about that one beautiful one That's you it. had. Straight down as an arrow went far along. It was a best shot. It was a best shot. I mean, Tiger Woods would appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I think a lot of us, it doesn't matter if five people you study about to start with the sister God study. It don't make it. It's okay. Come on. You find somebody else. All right. You just keep working at it. You, know. you keep working. You keep perfecting it. You gotta figure out, okay, what did I do right? Mm -hmm. That's why you don't never try to study alone. You have somebody up with you. And if you don't, right. hey, bro, what do you see? What did I do good on this study? Come on. Well, how, what could I do here? What, you know, what, I know. And so it's always good to have a mature person in there to help you, give you perspective. Mm -hmm. And it's great, you know, the guys, I love them because I ask them, what do you guys see? And it's so funny because we're talking and we're doing study. And I'm like, you know, stuck on my example, you know, back in the 70s, you know, and 80s. <laughs> you know, and these yeah. guys are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Fitz. Yeah, we're talking about Mark Fitz. You know, some of the old guys, yeah. they're like, who was Mark Fitz? Jim Rice. <laughs> you know, and it's good, because I'm, I'm learning from the young guys. Yep. I'm like, okay, what, what, what example should I use? And they're like, okay, I want you to use this one. Yeah. And it's kind of cool. Yeah. So now I don't use many examples, I let them use examples. There you go. Because <laughs> yeah. it's a younger guy, you know, so you learn. But see, it's all about working together as a team. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. I said, bro, what do you think about this? And have them share. But I know I'm bringing the heat. Right. In the studies. I'm bringing the conviction. I'm bringing the heart to help move the hearts to God. Mm. And see, guys, we gotta, we got to make sure that we're not just busybodies, but we're right. busy making it happen in the kingdom. Yeah. yeah. Another thing that I talked to about, I think a lot of us, we're stressed out. The Bible says it's turned to uh, Titus. Oh, yeah. Mm. Titus chapter 2. Mm -hmm. I think there are two things. We can't be busy body. We've got to be busy focused. Yeah, and the next thing is, I think we got to make the gospel attractive. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, sisters, you got a lot in advantage already on the brothers on that side. Right, Malik? We got to work it hard at it, don't we, Malik? Yeah. To make the gospel attractive. <laughs> We know who we are, right, bro? <laughs> Amen. We like Jesus. No beauty or majesty, just listen. <laughs> Titus 2, verse 10. This gets me excited, man. The Bible says here, the second part there, the last part of that last line there, making the teaching about God our Savior attractive. Mm -hmm. Who wants to follow a sad face? Nobody. A sourpuss. Come on. Come on. That's 
what you're looking for, right? Nope. Uh, Debbie Downer. Debbie <laughs> No! I think a lot of us, we gotta practice on being happy. Seriously. See some teeth. Some smiles. Some happiness. Some joy. You know what I'm saying here? Yeah, we gotta make the gospel attractive. Wow. I think a lot of us, we walk around with the stress of our Christianity and the stress of our work and the stress of our bills and the stress of this and the stress of that. Who wants to follow that? Uh, <laughs> but if you're going around and you're just excited about life, you know, it's like, what's going on about Naomi? Yeah. You know, she's just excited about life. Mm -hmm. You know, she's always smiling, always, I mean, I'm like, sometimes I'm like, man, she is so happy. <laughs> I'm like, man, I gotta get some of that. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yeah? Yeah. So we just start getting into it, you know, we come in with the worries and this business didn't show up and we didn't pick up so and so and this. Like, you see Naomi, she's like smiling and happy. You're like, oh man. <laughs> you see, that's what it's all about. Yep. Yeah. Come on. Make it the gospel attractive. Right. Nice. So if you find yourself stressed, I mean, I mean, some of you, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm gonna be on you. You gotta, you gotta loosen up. You gotta relax. Yeah. You gotta just, just enjoy it. Mm. Yeah. You gotta enjoy. That's yeah, awesome. The run. Right. And it's a run. Yeah. See, it's a run to the garden. Come on. See, this is the, this is the most, this is the most incredible Ooh. time to be a part of the ministry. Yeah. yeah. Cause we're like the dirty would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From Boston. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. yes. And we're going to be just like, you know what? It was like, it was Boston College Hotel. You know, it's not even there anymore. They tore yeah. it down. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> they tore it down. Right. But see, this is where we used to meet at. You know, it's your own old body defense. Yeah, they'll still be there. Yeah. Still <laughs> you know, it'll still be there. Yeah. <laughs> it'll still be there. It'll still be there. It's a dinosaur. Food trucks. You're like, yeah, I'm back there. Yeah, on the third well, floor. I think it was room 306 or something like that. Yeah, I know. What are we going to say when we're in the garden? Come on. Yeah. And there's three to five thousand people. Yeah. Coming in. Mm -hmm. Coming in just to hear the word of God. Come on. You see Colton out there on the ice. Wow. <laughs> Preaching the word of God. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> see all you got leading your regions. Some of you got to be sent out leading churches. Wow. Mm. Woo. He said, oh, Mm -hmm. But see, you have the joy of knowing that you made the gospel attractive. Wow. Yeah. And then the call of some of your disciples. Man, isn't it awesome? I remember when, you follow what I'm saying here? Yeah. Yeah. So, a few practicals and I'm done. All right, come, come on, on, come on, man. I want to start a fruit hotline. Yeah. A fruit hotline. What? All right, now the brothers, we get, we get together. If you want to join us, you're more than welcome. If we get too many, maybe we can divide up and maybe our sisters can have their own hotline. Brothers and sisters, we want to be on the hotline. 6.50 in the morning. We're going to have a little, a little time. We have a little devotional time. And then from 7.05, you don't want to get up to 6.50. You join us at 7.05. We're going to talk about fruit from 7.05 to 7.15. We get practicals on, on bearing fruit and reaching out to people, all that good stuff. So... The fruit hotline number is 218-339-3600 is the conference line. And then the extension is 331-782. So if you want to join us on the fruit hotline, we're going to talk about fruit, bearing fruit. Any questions, you know, we'll be on there. We're all, of, all of us will be helping out each other, man, to be fruitful. Amen? Amen. All right. Tonight, you can do this before you hit the pillow. I want you to develop for the next 30 days a fruit schedule. Amen? Amen. Come on. I want you to develop a fruit schedule. You got to sit down. You got to plan it out. You got to say, this is what I'm going to commit before God that I'm going to do. And you, you got to say, okay, these are the times I know I have, you know, write in your study spots time. Come on, well, I don't have any studies yet. Amen. You're going to go share. You're going to yeah. pass something. Amen. 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 And God is going to bless you. That's your heart. Amen. So you map out, this is when I can study the Bible with people so I can be fruitful. You map out that time, you block it out, you plan it in your schedule.
So you can do that and you go with your disciple or go with your spouse or your roommate and just talk about this is my fruit schedule. Just make that for the next 30 days. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Every Bible talk leader. Okay. We need to say, I want to be person. I'm going to lead the way. And all I tell my guys is, they're not going to outwork me. They might be younger than I am, but they're not going to outwork me. Well, Amen? They already know that. I already told them that. That's why we had them up there yesterday working. They were tired. Amen. Good. I love it. I'm like, yeah, okay, good. Y'all just don't know. If I was 20 years younger, y'all That's all right. You still going to have trouble right now. All right. You got to want it. You got to want it. Bible talk leaders. You got to want it. Next 30 days, you just, I'm going to set the pace for fruitfulness. Personally, if you have some, God bless you with somebody, but helping every Bible talk. Before we go to GLC, I would love to see every Bible talk have at least one man and one woman baptized. Yeah. That would be powerful, wouldn't it? Yeah. Wouldn't it be a great way to go out to the GLC? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Awesome. All right. We're going to help each other be fruitful. All right. We did, we did a trial run yesterday. Worked out some of the kinks, but uh, we're still going to be working on them. But I would like to see, after the um, <clears throat> class on Saturdays, those who are willing, and we can talk about this. I know uh, you guys are out, out next week, you're out of town. But I was hoping maybe the Ruben group, we can maybe have us go share with you guys. We have a designated place, have the guys go up and share. Yeah. Oh, with yeah. the sisters. I got a place for you. Okay, good. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so next week, after the time, you guys are going to see Luke and Roger. We're gonna go up and share with them where they tell you to go. We're gonna go, and then can you guys take the next week? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Saturday here. Yeah, Saturday. Yeah. So I think what time is the class over? Nine thirty. Yeah, nine thirty. So between ten thirty, where you just share from like ten thirty to one. Right. Have some lunch for the guys, you know, right. and maybe give you the phone numbers and follow. You guys can follow up and make it Fruit outline, call us up. Yeah. <laughs> Fruit outline, let us go. <laughs> All right, and then uh, July, June, July 27th, we're going to be out in Dorchester. Amen. Amen. Back, my back door. Amen. Uh -huh. And then August, I know Colton moving to a new location, so we want to help Colton build up yeah. his, his Bible talk in his area. So we might set something up there for August, but we'll let our evangelist tell us what he wants to do on that. Amen? Amen. Yeah. All right, one last thing, I'm done. Come on, bro. Turn to Jeremiah 8, verse 20. Okay. Sure, one quick story and I'm done. I never forget, I had a young brother that I was discipling in. He actually liked his sister, and I said, well, bro, if you want to get married, you got to baptize. Come on. Simple as that. Love you, but you got to baptize. So I set him up with the sister that he liked. So I kind of figured out she liked him too. So it kind of worked out a little bit. Amen? Nice. Put him, put him together. I said, bro, I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to work together. We're going to make this happen. And by that time, we had like three or four uh, Bible talks, single Bible talks going on. And I said, oh, I said, let me tell you guys, I said, what happened? I said, well, a lot of Bible talks going to do a lot of fun things. They're going to talk about going to the Esplanade and watching the Friday Night Free movies, and that could be good. They're going to talk about having all the barbecues and all the picnics and going to Castle Island and, you know, that can be good. But I'm going to teach you guys how to be truthful. Because at the end of the summer, I don't want you to just say, I went and did the Esplanade and I went to Castle Island and I did the movies and I did the picnics and the cookout. I want you guys to be able to say, at the end of the summer, you were fruitful. Mm. Come on. And you know what happened, right? At the end of the summer, the other three Bible talks, what they care about? The astronauts. The astronauts. The picnics and the castle <laughs> island and everything else. Every Friday night, we had our Devo. Didn't miss. We had our sharing time. Didn't miss. At the end of the summer, we had four baptisms. Jeremiah 8, verse 1. We don't want this to be said about the city of Boston after this summer. The harvest has passed, the summer has ended, mm -hmm. and we are not saved. 
Ouch. I want to dare to say the harvest is present. Amen? Mm -hmm. The summer will end, because it's the calendar year, it will end. <laughs> Amen? Not Texas. Not Texas. <laughs> <laughs> it is how the six shooters down there. <laughs> but I want at least 10 to 15 people to say, we were saved. Come on, mm -hmm. Frank. Going from fruitless to fruitful in 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.